Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. We're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. We have an email here from L. Okay, email from L. This is summarized by producer Eric, foreign lawyer at a crossroads. L wants to know if she's a realistic candidate for a scholarship before committing more time to the LSAT. She was a lawyer in her home country before moving to the US. Her family ties limit her to the NYC area. L scored 140 on a cold diagnostic and has studied a few months since then. Do her chances at a scholarship mostly come down to her LSAT score or is she disadvantaged given her background? Why would your background disadvantage you? So here's some bullet points. Okay. L is an athlete who won a national championship in her home country. She okay, was Okay, let's stop there. Seems oh. like a win, right? No, nothing see. but good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on that. <laughs> okay. Really, really good, actually. If you can talk about, you know, elite, like successful winning athletics, uh, there's a lot of it people takes who discipline. Are respect yeah. that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Summa cum laude in law school. Okay. That's a feather in your cap. Interned at a New York City law firm after law school. Feather in your cap. Passed the bar. Worked in big law and in house, I guess at your that's in your home country. Founded a startup accelerator. OK, that's a lot of different things. <laughs> Lots of good things. Lots of good things. Then L says. And then there comes the professional black hole. My past two and a half years were spent with immigration, childbirth and being a mom. I must say, even though I have always been a powerhouse, the past two and a half years were the most challenging and hardworking times in my life. I learned a lot about pushing myself to the limits and being efficient in time management. I also had some smaller achievements. I fought my insurance company and won a significant amount in healthcare coverage. Don't talk about that. Ran a half marathon. I don't think that's nearly as interesting as winning a national championship in your home country. No. Drafted some contracts for, oh boy, for friends and family and landed a part-time job as a child sports instructor. See, now it's just all over the place. And I, the drafting contracts for friends and family, don't talk about that. That's like practicing no. law without a license. Yep. You got to find some focus here for your, you know, what's your pitch? I think, I think L here is trying to like salvage or, or squeeze as much out of this time when she had a baby and then was a mom and look, you did a lot of great things, but you don't need to explain this two and a half year break. Even if they do ask why you weren't working, you can say you were a mom. That's totally fine. You were raising a human child yeah. <laughs> yeah. From, from, yeah. from childbirth. That takes a lot of work. L continues. Still, this is where my non-maternal activities end. Do you think this professional black hole will prevent me from receiving a scholarship? Absolutely not. Thank you in Don't advance talk about it. for taking the time to read this message and for your unbiased opinion on my situation. With kind regards, L. I have never heard any evidence that foreign students get worse scholarship offers. Have you? Nope. Okay. I think you're good. I mean, I we can't guarantee anything, obviously, but you sound like you you're a killer in a lot of ways. And if you give them the killer LSAT to go along with your killer resume, they're going to think, Oh, your LSAT raises the prestige of our school. Your resume certainly indicates that you are capable of, you I mean, you've practiced big law in another country. You've gone to law school before and got a summa cum laude. Is that how you say it? I don't know. Some come laude, I think. Laude, yeah, in law school. So you've already performed well in this environment. I think you're you're gonna do great, and you can just chalk these two and a half years up as being a mom. That's totally yeah, fun. and don't even mention it if you don't have to. I mean, they're yeah. gonna be admitting you because of your LSAT and your GPA mostly. They're gonna be giving you a scholarship because of your LSAT and your GPA mostly. And yeah. the fact that you are a lawyer in another country is an excellent thing to talk about. The fact that you've worked in big law is excellent. I think your national championship in your home country could be an excellent thing to talk about. You're protesting too much here, you know, and, and it's going to look really like it. 
Didn't you have the experience, Ben, that the second she starts talking about her half marathon and her drafting contracts for friends and family, then it's like, okay, so you're acknowledging that you weren't doing anything during that time. Well, (laughs) it actually makes me quite like if that's what you're you're excited about. What did you what was the national championship that you won? It does. It sounds like that half marathon does undermine the national championship, doesn't it? It seems like someone who had done that would. Yes, it's impressive that you ran a half marathon, but it seems like to someone like that, they would just be like, yeah, that's that's just something I did on the side to keep my athletics going. Right. It's not like, that impressive to jog a half marathon. I'm sorry. You, yeah. It's not that hard to get yourself to the point where you can jog a half marathon. <laughs> like, yeah. If you had won a half marathon, that's an entirely yeah. different thing. Yep. Yep. You just Even made if you had won your age group <laughs> you at a half marathon, that's an entirely different thing. But the fact that you participated in a half marathon, I don't, I care not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not to say that I could do it, but like if I wanted to do it, I could do it. <laughs> it was just, and it's so good. Pretty much anybody. Yeah. Yep. Um, thank you, Elle, for writing in. I think you are way too worried about, you know, this perceived hole in your application. And the reality is, if with the right LSAT, you're going to be a great applicant. Just make sure that you focus on like one or two or three killer attributes of your application instead of trying to cram in a thousand different ideas and things. Just focus on the true achievements instead of undermining the rest of your achievements by throwing in, you know, it's the equivalent of putting proficient in Microsoft Word on your resume. Yeah, it's a given. Right. It's like, I fucking hope so. But the second I see that on a resume, then I'm like, oh, God, like (laughs) you're really grasping at straws now to just put every possible thing on your resume. It makes everything else. It just and if nothing else, if I scan your resume, the more words that are on there, the less likely I'm going to see your national championship in your home country or your summa cum laude in law school, because instead I'm going to see a half marathon. And it's like, well, what? Yep. Just it's addition by subtraction, right? To yep. take off just out of all these stories, you just got to edit it all down. Yes, it's addition by subtraction. I thought what what she's doing is she's doing subtraction by addition. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Al. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening. 